Yeah, we're very happy to have Professor J. Mario Pellegrino here. It's really a pleasure. Um, a quick um, bio. So um, J. Mario Pellegrino received the MSc and PhD degrees in electrical engineering from Politecnico di Torino, Turin, Italy, in uh, 1998 and 2002, respectively. He's currently a professor of Polytronics, Electric Machines and Drives at the same university. Um, Dr. Pellegrino is engaged in several research projects with the industry and one of the authors of uh, open source project CIRA for um, the design of electric motors, which I believe we would be um, seeing in the seminar. He was a visiting fellow at um, Albert University, Denmark, the University of Nottingham, UK, and the uh, University of Wisconsin, Madison, USA. Dr. Pellegrino is an associate editor for IEEE Transactions on Industrial Electronics and an IEEE fellow. He has 60 plus uh, journal papers, five patents, and nine best paper awards. He uh, co founded the um, Polytronic Interdepartmental um, Center at the University of uh, Polytechnico di, di, di Torino and is a member of um, advisory board um, of PCIM Europe. He's also currently the uh, rector's advisor for interdepartmental centers. Um, and he's the recipient of eight uh, Grand Nagamora um, Award um, for synchronous and PM machine reluctance, uh, motor drives, theory design, and motor control. So Jimmy, happy to have you here, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Anand, for the warm welcoming, and thank you for so good morning also to, to those uh, contacted from remote. So this is, yeah, this is again the, the, the biography. This is myself, for those of you who are not here. And uh, this is uh, taken in our lab. Um, this is the CIRA team. Uh, it is the, the group of developers of this CIRA, which is the uh, design environment that I will mostly use throughout my presentation to, to show how we, how we tackle the problem of designing an e-motor drive, uh, starting from the e-motor design, then motor modeling, and then also simulation of the control of the drive. Uh, there, are, there, there is a, a postdoc researcher who is also the team leader, then two senior uh, third-year uh, PhD students, and, and this uh, freshman just started, uh, is starting now his, his, his PhD. Um, so this is the content of the presentation. I, I will be very quick because that's, I, mean, I, I, I merged uh, some material from, from, from different uh, recent presentations. And so there's a lot of things to say, but I will, I will, I will try to be, be quick. And then if you want to, to, to make questions or stop me on the way, feel free. And I will share this, this slide. So if you want to go deeper into that, you can study it later, and there are also references to papers and publications. And those were, I mean, there is a couple of uh, tutorials and speeches which are not public, uh, and those I provide the links so that you can download. So if you want to, so we have an open approach. So uh, I will just briefly introduce uh, my university and uh, and our power electronics uh, interdepart interdepartmental center. And then I will go to give an overview of what is CIRA, the main environment, and CIRA Drive, which is the tool into C within CIRA for simulation of the e-drive control. And so then uh, we have a case study, which is a demo of CIRA, which is a Tesla Model 3 uh, e-motor, IPM interior parameter machine. And we will show how we can starting from the specs of the e-motor, uh, which is very popular. It is for traction, of course. Uh, how we can design it from scratch and, and quickly and hopefully insightfully. And also about the control, what I will present is uh, the, the modeling we call the DQ theta. So normally you use uh, DQ modeling, meaning inductance maps or flux maps. We are using a third dimension, which is the, the, the rotor phase angle, which also tells you, so the additional information tells you about harmonic, space harmonic effects, torque ripple, and so on. So this is the content. So Torino is, I mean, if you, if you have an idea of how Italy looks like, we are in the corner here, surrounded by the Alps, which is a nice position to some extent, because we are close to everything, mountains, we have the Oli Winter Olympics, we have a very hilly and nice, not far away from, from the seaside. 
And uh, in terms of electrical engineering, we, we are the home of Galileo Ferraris, who was a character and he contributed to many inventions in the field of uh, electrical uh, engineering, like the transformers, the transformer modeling and, uh, and the rotating field. So our university is uh, dedicated, it's not strictly speaking a technical university, meaning academic, but the side, but it is dedicated to engineering and architecture only. This is why it's called the Polytechnic. Uh, we have uh, around 35,000 students, bachelor and master, and uh, nearly 1,000 PhD students, 1,000 faculty member, nearly 1,000 administrative, and to a minor extent, uh, technical staff. What is important is that the tuition fee is close to zero meaning that this goes from zero to 2600 uh, per year depending on on the family income and uh, the, the i mean depending on, on the, so it means and, and we are providing education to the world because most of our students are then uh, mi migrating out of it <laughs> so, I, mean, this is, I mean it's nice uh, that that is uh, for for cheap but it is said that they are leaving um Dealing with our center, this is called PAIC, that is the logo, and this is a, an interdepartmental center dedicated to, I mean, the, 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 the naming goes after power electronic, but within that, we also have uh, electrical machines and drives, of course, uh, and it is gathering uh, uh, groups uh, of experts of uh, all aspects of, of power electronic that we could find in the university, so also from other other departments. Uh, we are the main laboratories of uh, laboratory. This is a picture of our laboratory, and uh, we are the main laboratory of PAIC, where power converters, electrical machines, and drives are studied and tested. Uh, in this interdepartmental center, we gather an, a large number of faculty, and we have a, a critical, a, a good mass of PhD students. And the good of that is that they live together. I mean, they live together, and also they have good interaction with faculty members. So we are very collaborative and there's no barrier between uh, sub labs or whatsoever. So people can be helped by many sources. And so what we do normally is a TRL4 demonstrator, but we support also higher TRL prototypes, uh, mainly in the on the converter side. Uh, we have a testing capability up to 20,000 RPM. And uh, this is a dyno, but, and, 500 kilowatt peak, it was a back-to-back -back, uh, back -back testing. We, we cannot directly provide that much power. Uh, since the foundation of PAIC, uh, we had the two new fellows from IT Poly. We have five in total, and the one Nagamori worthy, one Na Grand Nagamori worthy, and some, I mean, we, we, we have, it is quite a success having this, having this center. And the opportunities for collaboration are of course, you, you know how to collaborate with universities, so co-funding or, or, fun, or funding PhD grants, a research contract, which is what uh, we, we do with, uh, with Mercy in uh, France, France uh, joined with Japan, and the EU-funded project that, uh, of course, you, you are probably not, uh, not interested to. So this is an, a glimpse of uh, the, our, our nicest uh, testing facility still in the same laboratory. It was inaugurated two years ago. And I mean, this is, this is very high hand in terms of accuracy or of, uh, of uh, measurement. We are using a setup by HBM. We are also partnering with HBM for developing the methodologies of testing and data analysis of their data recorders. And HBM, they are the benchmark solution for high precision cross transducer. So, uh, I mean, we use what is called the raw data approach that HBM introduced. So it's not a power analyzer that gives you out just the final result, power or power factor. We, 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 we have snapshots of measurement of the waveforms and that are, uh, that are processed in real time or offline to produce uh, an experimental efficiency map. And this is the measurement of input and output power in the speed and tor in, in power and power plane. Um, so going uh, more into the technical uh, contribution I want to highlight, 
Sire, this is the link uh, on GitHub where you can download the public version of Sire. This was updated last week in occasion of ECC in Detroit. And uh, let's see what are the tools. What what is the content of Sire? Let let's 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 just fly uh, a high level on, on Sire. First of all, uh, some some history uh, of Sire. So. CIRE started the collaboration between myself and Professor Cupertino of Politecnico di Bari, and it was motivated by FEMM, who is a freeware finite element, magnetics finite element tool uh, designed by Dave Meeker, just out of a hobby, meaning that this was his tool for, for his PhD, then he went working for Kinetic here in the Boston area, and he continued developing to the to the benefit of, uh, of, of the community. And this was really uh, inspirational to many, many, I mean, all, all machine designers have gratitude to them. So, so in 2017, we managed to have a tutorial together and so I'm very, very grateful for that. So what Sira can, can do, it can design an electric motor using the fair fix approach, which means a finite element calibrating the design equations. And then uh, we have a uh, capability of fast finite element model manipulation. So the starting core of CIRA is the interaction between MATLAB or Octave with FEMM. So this is the, the, the origin of that. On top of that scripting capability, we built many other opportunities like design-based, sorry, equation-based design or uh, optimization-based design. There, there are many, many, many features, uh, but the, 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 the common, uh, the common uh, keyword is fast. So we don't want to, to waste too much time in simulation. We try to minimize the, the use of finite elements. So it is, I mean, intended for preliminary design of a machine to complement later, if the case with the commercial cut suites. And pretty new, the contribution of serial drive for control of simulation model, and, and, and very new, the, the, the Plex model generation. We started the, with Simulink, so now we can create Simulink or Plex model. And uh, uh, basically, with one click, we are creating from a motor model, the eDrive model, with open source accessible C control code, which is compatible to a floating point target uh, embedded control. So this is just to show that Sire is downloaded across the world in many countries. And uh, I mean, going here and there, I find out that the people are using it. I, I talked to a guy of General Motors US uh, this weekend. He was saying, oh, great, great, thanks for that. <laughs> so there are some contributions we know and some others we don't know. Our partner companies, they tend to use it. Uh, the, the, the new release in October 22 is the one of, uh, of uh, in occasion of ECC. We have a new demo of Tesla Model 3, custom because we don't know the real data. This is our assumption of what the Tesla Model 3 is, and the uh, NPLEX model are included in this new, this new feature. So you see the approach is having graphical user interfaces for, for creating and simulating uh, uh, any motor. This is an interior permanent magnet P type rotor, and this is the resembles from close the, the, the geometry of, of the Tesla model, trend, model 3. So the geography is consists of two main GUIs, so graphical user interface, main one for inputting the parameters and building the geometry and quickly um, simulate in finite element when where needed. And then when the design is done, we do still here through simulation, we do the mapping of the motor. So we identify the motor mainly through the flux linkage maps. So flux linkage versus ID IQ current in the rotating frame synchronous to the rotor. And then we move to the manipulation GUI, which is called magnetic motor manipulation. And here we can build performance curve efficiency map we can scale the design on the fly without any further resimulation with FEM. So we scale it for a different size, for a different torque spec, for a different inverter rating. So we can change the number of turns on the fly, but also the dimensions using the, 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 the flux maps that we have simulated once for all for the first machine before scaling. And then we go to simulation of waveforms. So we can use it for 
uh, so the one called zero drive supported in Simulink and, uh, and Flex. And with that, we can calibrate the control or we can develop a new control technique. Or for example, we can simulate the PWM uh, car phase current triple and go back again to finite elements to feed the, the finite element model with, with these non-ideal uh, waveforms and reevaluate the iron and PM losses under PWM supply. So just, just very, very short overview. This is the main GUI where we have all the geometric parameters that are defining the geometry of, of the motor, or we can also import a custom geometry. For example, all the contours you see are coming from parametric approach, in parametric input, and the other ones, they are coming from a DXF, so a CAD uh, drawing that we imported. So in the end, the finite element model is made with the, the custom geometry if we import the DXF. Um, oh, sorry, here we have the, the, the preliminary design tab, which is uh, based on the fair fix approach. So if, if we press these, we, uh, we have a, what we call the design plane showing up. So this is a 2D geometric parametrization. So X is the rotor dimension. So we fix the outer dimension and X is the rotor dimension. So if you, each point of the plane as it is tentatively explained here is a different machine. So if I click here, I will get this geometry. If I click in this area, I will get the motor with a smaller rotor. And if I click from here, if I move to here, I will have a motor with the same size of rotor. As I said, X is the, is the split ratio between rotor and stator. But uh, B is kind of the thickness of, of the iron. So if you go from here to here, you see that the back iron and teeth and also the rotor iron becomes more slender, okay? So these are two arbitrary but significant parameters that summarize the geometry. And uh, what we represent here are performance curves. So the, the red ones are Newton meter. So the peak torque at MTPA conditions. So the, the peak torque that we can get out from the geometry at fixed current density. And the blue ones are the power factor. And the power factor is indicating also the constant power speed range prospect capability. And in a way it is with, with some translation, with some mathematics, it is representing the power capability, peak power capability and also flux weakening capability. So if you have the power factor too high, you don't have a constant power speed range and vice versa. And what, what is fair fix is that is are these 16 bullets here, 16 uh, dots, green dots. These are 16, geometries out of the plane that we fair simulate. So these are for building correction factors to correct the equation. So the curves, the blue and red, they come out of equations, but the equations are imprecise due to saturation. And so we correct the equation with correcting factor through these 16 simulations. So to get this plane, it takes five minutes. And this plan is telling a domain, a continuum of, of e motors. So you can optimize and, and choose which motor you like for, for what reason you like. So this is an entire design space with the same accuracy of finite element, but with the simulation time very, very much reduced. We can also do out of equation or fair fix. We can also do design optimization. We are using multi-objective optimizer and we started with that. In the origin. We started, this is why it's called CIR, because we started with synchronous reluctance motors. These are synchronous reluctance rotors that we built with the torque and torque ripple optimization. So the, the, the geometry was calculated by the optimizer, but this is not what we are talking about today. We are talking about PM machines and no use of optimization, just design out of equations and fair fit. And then we have a comprehensive simulation tab. We can do many things. We can do magnetic simulation and also structural analysis. And magnetic simulation leads, for example, to D and Q uh, axis flux leakage map. This is the footprint of the motor. So to define the performance of the motor, we use uh, the lambda D and lambda Q, so flux linkage versus IDIQ, which are the coordinates of, for example, uh, field-oriented control in, in 
current control, current vector control is the Q coordinate. And then uh, we also have the torque map, the peak to peak torque ripple, and then we can manipulate these curves to get the, 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 the torque contours and so on and build performance curves. We can build, for example, out of manipulation, the apparent inductance, it's the incremental inductance, all these all this information that you need for design and for control. And uh, we can build the uh, control curves like MTPA, maximum torque per ampere. These are the torque contours in the IDIQ plane. This is just manipulation. And we can forecast the torque versus speed profile at maximum converter current and the limited voltage of the converter. And this is the same curve just represented in the power versus RPM power versus speed. So this is just out of manipulation. We do not need to, I mean, the, the bottleneck of simulation is just having the flux linkage maps, which takes around one hour, I would say. Then we have another mapping to do, the finite element evaluation of iron loss. We have our method to make it quick. So we simulate another grid of IDIQ points uh, normally, we use fewer points of simulation, so few, uh, a, a grid which is uh, coarse respect to the one we use uh, for, for, for flux linkage, but we use a more refined, uh, let's say, time step or angled step for, for, for and, and the larger uh, time span, we would say, to be accurate in calculating finite element uh, iron loss, but we do this at a single speed value. And then we use the Steinmet equation for scaling, not the frequencies, but, but, but the speed. So we, we scale the speed through the uh, frequency expression into the Steinmet formula. So this is what we do. We have a single simulated map of uh, iron loss or PM loss. And then when we change the speed with respect to N0, which is the one we simulated, we're just scaling using the same Steinmet coefficient. This is for hysteresis plus excess, and this is for radical. And the same is valid for, for PM loss. We use exponent two with, with PM loss, which is way conserved. Uh, then we have AC loss model. So this is the slot model. This is the example of uh, air pins or format bar uh, stator uh, windings. And this is the effect of uh, Skin and proximity loss. So this is a dedicated simulation with a slot model that is created automatically by Sirius. So it is, it is very quick again. And, and we have a table of uh, AC loss uh, the, uh, normalized by DC loss, function of frequency, function of temperature. So as, the, as, the, as it gets warmer, the effect is mitigated. And with all these ingredients, we can get to just out of manipulation again, we can get to the efficiency map, which is normally the most comprehensive information uh, of, of, of an electric motor. And it is what, what you need in many applications in automotive, for example. So the efficiency map is in the speed and torque plane. Here we have the limits. The limits are dictated by the maximum current and the aggregate of maximum current and maximum voltage from, from, from the inverter. And here, still in the DQ plane, we have the optimal control trajectories. So this is the trajectories at, at any speed for getting from low torque to high torque. Here is MTPA. Here is when flux weakening is imposing reduction, uh, deviation from MTPA. So this is all out of manipulation. And as you can see, this is kind of step-by-step -step guided by our publications. And uh, about sustainable simulation, we have uh, we have structural simulation. There is a tool in uh, MATLAB called the PD2 toolbox, which permits finite element modeling. And so we develop uh, structural simulation for centrifugal validation of our high speed rotors. And this is one of the tools. So it takes some minutes to simulate uh, one, one more. So this is the overspeed number we put here. This is 18,100. But even before that, when we do, I mean, when we just input a geometry, there is an analytical estimate of how big this center post must be. So this one is adapted on the fly just in, as a response to the maximum speed input. 
And so, for example, when we build the XB design plane, all our machines are adapted automatically. We don't need to run the finite element. The finite element structure is just made at the end when I select the design for refinement and for validation. And this is the collaboration or synergy to outside uh, software, commercial software. This is the example of MotorCAD. So when we have geometry, when we have a motor, we can export to MotorCAD and MotorCAD we mostly use it for thermal simulation. But we have all the other, other, other cards in the loop, Sim Center, Magnet, Infolitica, Ansys Maxwell. And as I said offline before, before we started the seminar, we will we will move to JMAC probably and also console multiphysics because that is the reference one for structural analysis. And it is nicely portable. The magnetic and structural model, they are more nicely portable with respect, for example, to ARCs. So basically we, we, we go automatically. So we click a button and the, the model is recreated in the outer environment. And for example, what we use is for is for building the, con the, the, the continuous torque capability of our motor. So this is the efficiency map, but uh, with simulation from MotorCAD with some, some coolant, some water jack, with some conditions, we can evaluate the, 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 the continuous torque curve in fact. So CR drive is the last mile, the last step and the newest one is once again, we can from CIRA, we can create a simulink or plex model with control code and get to uh, wafers. And as you can see, Anantaram was uh, the, the first contribution contributor to this with, with this student, Dario Brunelli. Uh, this was uh, a paper coming out of uh, master, master thesis. So one example of use is the one I mentioned already before is uh, simulating the PWM waveforms and then go back to re-simulate the efficiency in this point. So if we re-simulate the efficiency in this point, I see from the loss breakdown, the, the, the blue one are the augmented uh, losses after PWM. So I see there are some minor, minor loss increase in iron and the stator and so on. And here, in the VMs, I see that the losses are booming. So this is why in Tesla, for example, they have to segment the magnet because the bulky, the solid the magnets, they are very responsive in terms of eddy current to high frequencies. Uh, why we simulate just one point? Because simulating the entire flux, uh, sorry, efficiency map is quick because we use fundamental sinusoidal excitation. So the finite element is quick. When you have to re-simulate with PWM, the time step is very fine. You cannot scale with speed. You have to ch choose a single speed for a single operating point. And so this takes time. I, I, I don't have the number, but probably re-simulating this, this single point takes around one hour. So it is comparable to the time you need for doing all the rest in sinusoidal supply. So, uh, I know I'm rushing. I will try to to to, to stuff all all possible content within within the the, the, the allocated time. Uh, so the case study is uh, the redesign of Tesla Model Three rear axle IPM machine through the FIAFIX design me method, and then still on the same numbers on the same case study. I will just show you a glimpse of uh, serial drive and advanced the modeling uh, capability. So I, I, I introduced already the design plane X and, and B and, and the performance curves. Uh, just, just, just to, to, to add a detail. So the performance curves, uh, we have highlighted for 30 Newton meters and 0.71 power factor. And you notice the power factor goes increasing this way, whereas torque goes increasing the other way. So the green area is the feasible area according to the specs of Tesla 3. So we need to have a, a torque which is higher than 430 and the power factor which is higher than 0.71 for, for some reason related to the specs. So this is the feasible area. But then we will cross this area with other contours. For example, the magnet mass is increasing going downwards and also the um, 
copper mass is increasing going this way. So we, we can cross all the specs and find the regions of feasibility of, of, of the machine very insightfully. So we, uh, we have this demo in, uh, you can download, if you download Syria, you can find this demo, which is called Tesla Model 3 Custom. It is very simply made of two files. It is a FEM, FEM file, which is the finite element model plus a data set in, in MATLAB. So it's just two files. So we, we now redesigned this using Fairfix. So these are the specs, and this is how we end up defining the two, let's say, boundaries of performance. So 40, 40 Newton meter or beyond, and 0.71 or beyond. 71 is even too low, meaning that we, we I mean, 71 is kind of conservative. So, so we, 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 end, we will end up in selecting design with higher power factor in general. So we will prefer to choose a machine in this region closer to the torque limit rather than in this region closer to, to the power factor limit. And we will accept and we, we will welcome power factors higher than 0.8. This is what I mean. So uh, this is the same design plane, just with different colors. And we are just highlighting the same curves the same boundaries. And again, I wish I show you that if you click here, you will get some cross section. And if you click here, you will get another. So it is family of uh, cross sections. What is common is the outer diameter of the stack, the length of the stack, and the current density. And then there are some rules for design. Some angles are defined. Of course, the number of poles, the number of slots is defined, and so on. But besides, power factor and torque, we can represent a lot of figures of merit in the same plane. This is how the parametrization is, uh, is defined. And for example, if you focus on the back iron, you will see that the back iron comes by the product of X times B. And X is the horizontal coordinate and B is the vertical. So, and also the, the tooth is proportional to X and B. Then there is a coefficient, uh, KT to the coefficient that I can decide, I can decide to trim the, the tooth width to be more saturated or less with respect to the back iron. So I can I can still play with that, but mostly the, the iron dimensions come from the product of X and B. And this is the same for the rotor. Also, the rotor comes out of X and B, the, the product of that. So just just very, 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 very shortly. I mean, this is, this is how we build the, the design equation. And then we later fix it. And the design equation refer to normalized number of turns. So it is the flux linkage normalized by the number of turns. And it is the current multiplied times the number of turns, which is the MMF. It is not ampere, it is ampere turns. And it is not volt second, it is volt second divided. Uh, number of turns because the design plane it is independent of the number of turns in, 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 at the first glance. And after we build the torque and power factor equations with this approach, we end up having these curves, but these curves are inaccurate. And so we do the simulation, as I said, on 16 dots, 16 selected motors at the corners on the grid of the, of the plane. And then these are the coefficients we apply to end up with these curves that are virtually exact, finite element speaking, okay? So uh, one, 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 more, one more detail on mechanical integrity, although I said it already. So you will notice that uh, if you pick up a machine like here with, or, or let's see this one. With small rotor, because we are on the left side, you see the inner post as a certain dimension. And on the, on the right side, bigger rotor, bigger masses, a bigger, a bigger inner post. As I said, this is analytically adapted when we build the design plane. And then it can be further refined and selected K to infinite error. So the radial ribs are automatically calculated. So let's go to design plane again and let's see, for example, this is just an example of the region of visibility. So this is the torque limit. This is the power factor limit. This is crossed to the magnet mass. So this is 1.8 kilograms, which is 
the magnet mass of theta, and this is growing, going downwards. So if we want to beat the theta in terms of magnet mass, we have to stay in this region, okay? And then there are many other things to be considered and crossed. So we have a, a flow chart. So we start with that and uh, with the torque and power factor plane, and we define the first, the first area of feasibility. Then we cross it with the PM mass, we cross it with copper mass as well. And so we define this. And then we 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 reckon we we I mean we work on the feasible number of turns and there are this is feasible with nine number of turns this is feasible with twelve number of turns but this is out of the region of feasibility in the end we end up converging here and the number of turns depends on the inverter spec if Tesla had another inverter voltage for hundred volts we would have had other 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 number of turns and this is the first machine, but if I find it element simulate the performance of this, I see I see this is too this is too successful, meaning the power is too big and so on. So this is the stack of Tesla, 135 millimeters. I can if if the performance is in, is not enough or it is exceeding, I can adjust the stack length or the current density and I go back. So in the end our final motor is shorter. 20 millimeters short. Uh, so this is just the final uh, results. So this is the first iteration model with 135 stack. And these are the two possible solutions with the 114 uh, stack shorter, shortest. In the end, we, we selected this motor three and these are the torque versus speed curves and, and the dashed one is the, is the target performance of this. So we are very happy with, with the green one, although it is the, the lowest one, but it is also the one with the shorter stack and the minimized magnet quantity. And we also verified the demagnetization. It is compatible. So final leg of this presentation is a serial drive. So on, on our uh, MMM GUI, we have a tab dedicated to simulation. So we have a button where we create a plex model, and we have a button where we run, create and run a simulated model. Uh, this is alternative. We, we also have a time computational time comparison by the way. So what are the main features of plex or simulic model? Uh, and this is beyond what uh, Anand uh, saw at the time. Uh, the, the work he did was in 2020, 2021, but, but now we have refined this and uh, now we have circuital models of the motor and the inverter. And this is nice because with circuital models, you can emulate the fault conditions. With, uh, then we are flux map based. Flux maps are our obsession. So far, we have used 2D or DQ flux map. The one I showed you were DQ flux map. What is a DQ flux map? It is representing the fundamental or let's say the, 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 is representing the fundamental component of the DQ flux linkage in response to a, a sinusoidal excitation current. The DQ theta map is still the response of the machine to a sinusoidal excitation, but it is not just the fundamental, it is the, 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 the real uh, way Also, function of the theta. So it means that you are including with the fundamental component also all the space harmonics, which uh, brings you to have uh, harmonics on back EMF, for example, harmonics on torque, which hold the torque figure. And then we have either time average or instantaneous PWM simulation. Then we have the discrete time control and we have accessible uh, C control code for torque control, speed control, current control. And also just for the synchronous reluctance, and this is an AMP contribution, we have the sensorless control algorithm. So just to have an idea, when we click that button, a, a new folder is created. And in the folder, you have a flex model you have some initialization file, and then you have C source code. You have a main code for the motor, algor motor control algorithm, and then you have the user functions 
where our data are defined like variables, constants, functions, and so on. These are user libraries for motor control, which is kind of standardized at least in our group. So this is we create automatically motor model, inverter model, this is circuiter, and then the control is a triggered C uh, script. So it's triggered at discrete time of uh, PWM interrupt. So for now we are using single sampling. So it is synchronized with the power switch frequency. We can do over sampling. I mean, we can do whatever we want. We can do double sampling, but the standard solution is that. So inside the control block, we have a C script. This is the delay of actuation. And the control code is portable to any floating point uh, uh, architecture. So in the lab, we mostly use this space for rapid control prototyping. We don't use an embedded uh, MCU, but it is also compatible with the uh, MCUs like uh, STM32, which is the one we use for teaching and uh, for many of our converted prototypes. And the code works on the fly, meaning that it is calibrated because we know everything of the drive from here. Okay, then just a couple of notes on how you can uh, do the motor model. There are in the literature and in the Plex demo, there are two main models. One is uh, voltage behind the reactant. So it is a three phase power circuit with, uh, um, this is a resistance, this is an inductance, this is in, in, in phase coordinates, so in stator coordinates. So you have, if, if the motor is rotating, you have to adapt the inductance uh, at every time step. And this is the back EMF, which is also mathematically calculated. So it is, this is the standard model of PLEX with a VBR approach, or there is the controlled current generators that where the power circuit is made of current generators, which are controlled by the mathematics of, of, of the motor. So the limits, where before our, our intervention, there, there's no loops. You cannot put the flux maps. You can just put single parameters, LD, LQ, PM flux linkage. And then there are, there are other, there are other, uh, there is a model with flux map loops, but, but it is kind of non-satisfactory to our scope. So what we did is we compared these two approaches and we created our own circuit model and in the end, we ended up choosing the CCG, so the one with the with the with current uh, uh, generators for time of quickness of computation. Uh, so this is how it works. So this is our model. You see the, the generators here, current generators, and here it is the mathematics. So we we measure the voltages at the generator terminal, and then. Uh, we integrate the, the back EMF, we, we obtain the fluxes and so on, and we use the flux maps. So what is important, this is a downside of this approach, is that we don't use the flux map. You see here, it is called the inverse flux map. So it is not flux linkage function of IDIQ, it is a current function of flux linkages. And this is a limitation. So if this is the direct flux map we have seen so far, the one we calculate with finite element or we measure with experiment, we have to invert it mathematically. We cannot measure this, but we need it because the model needs it. And doing so, what we are doing is restricting the domain representation. So this is a little dramatic because uh, uh, it is represented on two quadrants, but we normally don't use this quadrant here. So let, imagine that we are only having, let's say, this quadrant here. But the point is that you have a domain, an initial domain of representation, which is as big as the square here. And then after inversion, the valid value are just reduced to this shrinked domain. So if we were on a single quadrant, basically the, the proportion would be less dramatic. It would be that the initial domain would be this one and the reduced domain will be nearly 70% of that. But the problem is there. So we have to accept these if we want to be quick, or we use the VBR approach, we use the direct maps and doesn't have this problem. But it is, uh, it is, uh, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, slower in terms of computation. 
A net contribution to modeling is the DQ data model. So as I said, we are adding a third dimension to the flux maps, the theta angle, which is the rotor phase angle. And so we are kind of duplicating or replicating for several positions the, the, the maps. And uh, we can use the same approach also with experimental data. So we can use a very, we can build a very accurate similar complex model of the drive, even using uh, experimental data. So just to show an example, this is a simulation of a torque reversal. We are, at, we are at the constant speed. So this is the torque reversal with the sinusoidal model. So DQ model without harmonics. These are the ABC currents and these are the ABC duty cycles. And you see they are pretty sinusoidal. Everything is pretty regular and also torque is pretty smooth. If I go into the DQ theta modeling, you see torque ripple, you see non-sinusoidal current, which are also telling that your control is not very reactive to higher order harmonics. So you can, this, you can fix it with recalibration or with the resonance control. And you see that, and this is on the deep cycle, you see this, this ripple, and this is inevitable. It means that the plant, the E-motor is non-sinusoidal and so, Somewhere you will find the, the ripple, either on the torque and the duty cycle. You can remove it from the current, but not from the torque and duty cycle. So this is a high fidelity model that can use, be used for model-based control, design, hardware in the loop, digital twin. And we are working on extending this to multi-three phase uh, systems, not just three phase. So just an overview of computational time, this is flex current generators or voltage behind re reactors and simulating current generators or voltage behind reactors. So you see there is a trend of flexors being quicker. So the conclusions are that, uh, the, the nice conclusion is that if you go DQ theta in flex, you see here, in, at least with the CCG, the extra time is not dramatic. So red versus red means DQ versus DQ theta in time average. It is not dramatic what we have to spend here. And also instantaneous, so PWM against PWM, it is 20 seconds versus 25. So the DQ theta adv advanced accuracy is not so costly in terms of, of uh, computation. And finally, uh, I hope you, uh, I succeeded in giving you an overview to Siri, to the approach of the design of IPM machine for traction, but this is not limited to IPM machines for traction. And we use a Tesla 3 as reference, and we pre present the, the graphics design plane that crosses design goals and constraints in a graphic manner. And uh, for example, we have, um, consider PM mass and copper mass in the design as additional constraint. We could minimize the stack length. And uh, we include in serial loss evaluation, thermal evaluation, structural simulation, control simulation with zero drive. And yes, the, the most the brightest contribution of zero drive is, is, uh, is the loop-based based modeling and in particular the DQ theta loop-based modeling. Uh, finally, yeah, uh, the, 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 take, the, the takeaways are that inverse flux map are a bottleneck. We have to kind of sort that for, for the reason of domain limitation. And also that the DQ data model adds accuracy to, this, to the model at limited computation, computational cost. And as usual, this is not over yet, hopefully, <laughs> meaning that we are still struggling every day for, for, for improving. And as I said, you have the list of references and you have a couple of links where you don't find it online. So this is the tutorial at ISEN 22 Valencia, uh, early, early September. And this is the Plex conference in Zurich, mid-September. You can basically, this is the merge of these two presentations. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Very, very comprehensive um, overview. Um, if there are any questions from the audience. Um... Uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, yes, yes. 
Yeah. Uh, Professor, uh, good to see you again. I feel that the idea to, uh, it is very interesting idea to uh, visualize the uh, design constraint in the two dimensional map based on 16 point of simulation. Uh, you know, I believe it is, it will bring us much efficient design process. Uh, I have two questions about it. The first one is how is the accuracy of it? Because the, I believe it is something similar to interpolation or simulation based on fixed and discrete point. Well, I'm just uh, the magnetic is sometimes very nonlinear because of magnetic saturation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, I answered that. Um, it is only partially true, meaning that inside the mo the single motor, the magnetic properties are very nonlinear. But if you uh, represent a, a domain of machines, as it is the case here, we don't see the slides for some reason. Sorry about that. Uh, I thought you, you saw the slide. Yeah. But if you consider uh, let's say the, 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 the sense, if you fix the, the, the current density and then you simulate uh, different machines varying the dimensions, the, 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 the quantities, the surface of response is, is pretty smooth. So you, you can see uh, it here. Uh. This is the, the response surface of uh, magnet flux linkage, for example, changing the machine. So the surfaces that we represent and that we pinpoint with the, with the finite element are not distant. They are very they, they, they are very smooth. So the equations they give an approximation of the sur response surface, and then the finite element corrects it. So linear interpolation is way enough, and this is told by this figure. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm not aware of that. But yeah, 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 but because it is a different approach. Mm -hmm. But in the in the beginning, we made validation of this. So we ran a couple of planes oh, with, yeah. with fine step. Mm -hmm. So to have a full finite element in reference one, I think, or two, there is this. So we we we, we, we computed for two days and we had a, a BX plane made of a lot of fine step at the machines. Uh, and uh, and yeah, we, we, we could overlap the, the, the curves for this reason that the response surface is smooth, although inside the machine there is a hell of nonlinearity. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so can I ask one more question? Of course. My second question is uh, in your shown is the problem with uh, uh, two design variables, but is it possible to? Right, with much, much large number of the uh, uh, For the sake of uh, inside two uh, D, is, I mean the way to go for reason of evidence of graphical evidence. Because, yeah, because you can see and understand uh, very easily, very quickly. Exactly. Uh, for now, what we do is that we have. Uh, these two variables uh, designated, mm -hmm. and then we have other parameters you can change. So our suggested approach is that, okay, if you want to, I don't know, have uh, more saturated uh, teeth, you can calibrate the, the, the tooth coefficient and run the plane again in 2D. If you, if you go 3D, and this is a way of going 3D in, in snapshots, I would say. And the, and, and the main three parameters that are, are I mean, the ones I've shown are, are the back iron coefficient. You can make it thinner or thicker than average, than, than default, and, and the teeth, and the, also the, 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 the rotor iron. But you can do the same, for example, with the angles of, of the barriers or yeah, uh, the slot opening. Mm -hmm. You can do with any parameter. You can run again uh, the, the, the this is also why, so this is a 2D limitation in a way, is also why we say this is a preliminary design. Okay. So this is very quick to get to comprehensively uh, determine the main, uh, the performance you can get, the size you can, uh, you need and so on. And you have everything. Of course, 
when you converse to a design, then you can do refinement, you can do sensitivity. But the point is not starting the analysis with sensitivity. So what, mm -hmm. what I see around is, is what we call the brute force approach is that people, like maybe they, they take an initial design, then they, they do a lot of sensitivity. What is, if I change this? What if I change that? At the third variable, you, you lose track of what you're doing. And, uh, and so, okay, let's put everything in an optimizer. So this is the opposite approach. I have a very good first attempt, already maybe refined. Mm -hmm. You see, we have refinement on, on, on stack length here. And then I can build on that. That is my initial design. Mm -hmm. And your recommendation is to vary our because of the Best we could find so far, but yeah, we sometimes this this question was was also <laughs> coming in the past. <laughs> like, why, why this two? <laughs> because they are two. <laughs> Thank you. We have another question, uh, Matt. From Matt, go ahead. Okay. All right. So I'm glad I'm glad you still have this slide up. I'm um, sorry, we don't hear you. You have no audio, you have video. Can you hear me? Hello? Hmm. Oh, we can't hear you. Okay. Uh, oh. Yeah. Can you say it again? Okay, so Matt has typed in the question. Um, what advantage does the parametric correction have over direct interpolation between the PRSs? Uh, in that case, uh, I mean, I, I go back to, I, mean, I hope that Matt can see the slide. Um, yeah, he says, okay, uh, the, the advantage is that uh, you 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 have a better interpolating function because you start from uh, analytical response surface that are qualitatively correct but quantitatively imprecise. So if you just simulate a matrix, I hope you can see my my point. But if you just simulate, uh, yeah, okay, good. If you just simulate the matrix of six. Six point, 16 points, this is very coarse. So you will have, here you cannot see continuous lines. You will see, tuck, tuck, uh, let's say, piecewise linear, uh, piecewise linear. For example, you have a residual effect here. You see this discontinuity here. But uh, if, you, if it was just 16 points, you would see very, 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 very low quality surface. And, this means that the accuracy uh, in the points uh, far from uh, far from the simulated ones will be just kind of erratic, plus minus something. Here we can say that the accuracy is pretty close to one percent error and continuous, not just. To me, um, so he's following the follow up question. Does the corrective surface pass through the PR points? Yes, it? this is what we were commenting now. So, uh, in reference uh, one, this one here, fair fix, the first time we, we formulated the fair fix acronym, there is a computational time and accuracy uh, comparison. So, we ran at that time. Uh, an entire fair calculated uh, design plane. So with, 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 fine, with a fine grid of simulated machines. And uh, of course it depends on how many fair fixed points you use. So now for the IPM motors, we are using 16 green dots because they are needed. 
because in the IPM motor, the equations are more inaccurate than in the synchronous reluctance motor. At the time of reference one, so two years, uh, three years ago, then this is published in 2020, uh, we, in the synchrel, we have better equations. And so we were using only five uh, fair fixed points, but the matching with 16 points is uh, pretty, pretty accurate. I, I don't have the, the, the benchmark uh, for, for this specific case, but I can tell you that we are within one plus minus 1% 1 of error on the point. How long does it take to simulate these? The plane, uh -huh. 16 the, points. the plane takes like five minutes. It, is, it depends on your computer, but we are using parallel processing. So you simulate 16, if you have a 16 core, it takes uh, one minute. <laughs> if you have uh, four cores, five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so Bingman, you have a question? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Um, Still no. Uh, let's just type. Go through the chat. Yes. If you alternatively mute, uh, you yeah, I, I can mute. I unmute again. This is a good point. Um, we can do both. So in, in what we represented, uh, I, I didn't do any finite element simulation for structural analysis. Um, as I said, the, the BX plane is kind of out the, uh, equation based. So um, the fair fix is just for finite element. Sorry, it's just for uh, correcting the magnetics of it. So we, we didn't include anything in the design plane so far about the structure of finite element. We use it for offline validation. However, there is another tab of CIRE, which is the optimization tab. And there you can select the optimization goals and the inputs. And also you if, if you include in the optimization goals and in the design inputs structural sensitive variables, um, this includes also the running of these structural finite elements. So for example, if you want to minimize the ribs, you can add the structural ribs as a design inputs and, uh, and, you, and you can set um, a target speed or you can, you can put the speed as a, uh, as, a, as an quantity to be optimized and so on. So we can use the optimizer, sorry, we can use the stru structural finite element uh, in, in the optimization as well. It took like two hours because every time step, the MATLAB had to talk to FEM, simulate the machine, get the losses. Mm -hmm. But can we do it from the CIRA drive point of view? Since we have the, the iron loss equation, maybe just take the FFT. Um... Uh, there are two bottlenecks here. So, okay. So all the CIRA drive approach is meant for not having to run any further finite element after you have all the information from motor design. So you simulate accurately the magnetics without having to run finite element. Uh, in terms of losses, 
we are working on including the loss model in zero drive. For now, simulations of control are still lossless kind of. I mean, there is the little resistance, but there's no iron and PM loss. There's no mechanical. And mechanical losses are there because those, those are easy. So we are working for including that. The problem with PWM is uh, that the loss map we have is the fundamental condition one. We don't have the, a loss map including mm -hmm. PWM because that will take a lot of time. But not only that, because um, if you change anything, the PWM wave for so the, the simulation of PWM loss is very much dedicated. For example, if you change the DC link voltage, the waveform of your PWM current changes. And so you have to redo the simulation again. So a good insight could be what you maybe, if I understood well, suggested that, that you have a loss model and that this loss model in Simulink reacts to the waveform. So this will be dreadful. <laughs> it will be great. Uh, but we, we are not at that point yet, but it was very nice, nice approach. For now, the idea is to step by step integrate the information we have in the model, which is already something because, for example, Plex, which is much more advanced than Simulink in terms of uh, modeling of E-drives, they don't have any loss there. So it is already a step ahead. And the reason why they don't have any loss is that because where do you have the data of loss? So if you have if you have data sheet of, of a motor or whatever motor who, who tells you the data, so they, they didn't spend even the effort to to, to uh, is, is my mic yes okay so we are going in that direction but but this is a very 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 brilliant idea I'm not sure it is physically doable but <laughs> maybe with artificial intelligence we, we can we can get to a uh, to a high frequency, a comprehensive low frequency and high frequency loss model out of initial finite element information. This is what industry is asking a lot. It's like, oh, but can you give us models? Like, yeah, you, you do a lot of simulation and then you have models that respond to anything. It's like you input <laughs> any frequency, any arbitrary weapon. Uh, yeah, do it by tomorrow. <laughs> no, I cannot. <laughs> Time loss modeling is a hot topic. Yeah, yeah. Um, are there any any more questions? Yes, this oh, is gosh. this is a good point, and uh, depends uh, very much on uh, on many factors. So normally. Motor designers, they use a correction factor for, for iron loss, which goes from 1.5 to 2, meaning that uh, the losses predicting by finite element are uh, optimistic and you have to multiply 1.5 to 2. And the fact that this is different, uh, one case to the other, depends also on the accuracy of the manufacturing pro process, so the, the, the accuracy of cutting, uh, and also other factors like uh, compression uh, of laminations, for example, in the alving, is is doubling the loss, can double the loss. So you, you need. So we we have started. Uh, uh, I mean, we, we we have started some kind of contact with with a very specialized German company, which is called Brockhaus. They, they are super good in testing soft and dark magnetic material. They can they, they show you these various effects on the increase increase of loss. The third fact why why this is imprecise is that the algorithms also are imprecise in determining the, the element losses. Once again, because of la lack of data. So uh, Brockhaus is is very good at measuring loss. On the, on, on the machine, but also at characterizing the material, advanced characterization. So normally you find the Epstein uh, or sinusoidal excitation loss curves 
In the electric motor, each point is excited with vectors that are not sinusoidal, not single dimension. So the, the finite element cannot make miracles because you miss a lot of extra information. So data from lost data in advanced supply conditions from, from the, let's say, virgin material, but also all the secondary effects related to the final fact as well. So I would say that we are no better than that. And also that being a university, we don't have a reliable, uh, so when we have to do a prototype, sometimes we have a supplier, sometimes we have another. And so we, we, we don't have a statistics uh, with enough cases for, for, for telling, okay, this time we will have 1.5, this time we will have two. So it depends case by case by case, but we are kind of trying to isolate the, 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 the key one is, is, is a laser cutting. In prototype, we use a laser cutting. So we have, a, we have a supplier, which is the best in class, the one that is doing uh, uh, prototypes for Ferrari, for uh, Lamborghini, for whoever. And his laser cut is the most harmless as possible, similar to punch. It means that that is reliable and, and, and the like. So we are building our tools also on the manufacturing side. But, but, but this is a typical problem of anyone. Japan is the most advanced nation in uh, calculation of iron losses because JMAG and JFE Steel Corporation, they long, uh, uh, they, they, they collaborated for, for, for a long time. And, and, and in fact, uh, JMAG is the best in this sense for, for, for estimate. Of, this is under PWM and so on. 